In the early stages of our solar system, the Sun ejected what is known as a protoplanetary disk. This conserved the angular momentum of the particles making up the Sun, and they would become hotter and denser without revolving at an unsustainable speed. Now, the ejected particles basically spread out along the line of the Sun's equator. Most of the heavy elements staying mainly in the inner part of the solar system, with lighter gases being pushed deeper into space. This protoplanetary disk eventually formed the inner rocky planets and the outer gas and ice giants. The general situation is that the planets and moons are then formed from this disk as they're orbiting the sun for millions and millions of years, then sucked up most of the remaining debris, what's known as clearing their orbital path or clearing the neighborhood. This means that within the orbital path of any true planet, there are no comparable sized objects and that planet in that particular orbital zone is by far the largest structure. However, this would mean that space inside what's known as the Oort cloud which could be considered the outer limit of the solar system is empty. Far from it. There are, however, some areas which are a little bit more crowded than others. Now, in the outer part of our solar system, most of the material ejected by our sun has very little mass and was thinly scattered over actually quite a large area. Most of that mass then coalesced to form the giant planets of our solar system, leaving the remaining debris spread out over such an enormous area that individually or collectively it doesn't amount to many significant objects, represents very little hazard to spacecraft trying to fly through the region. Mass in the inner part of the solar system faced a different challenge. Here there was far more mass for a given area, the individual elements were generally heavier than the outer part of the solar system. However, in this zone, the rocky planets of Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars all orbit fairly close to each other. And also, the Sun is fairly close and they orbit relatively quickly. This means that in fairly rapid succession, any debris in these areas, either absorbed by the planets or by the Sun, leaving the air mostly clear of substantial objects. However, beyond the orbit of Mars, which is the last of the rocky planets, is another story. Now, the Earth orbits the Sun a distance of about 150 million kilometers, and Mars orbits at around 228 million kilometers. But the gap between their orbit paths is only about 78 million kilometers. Now, the next planet out is Jupiter, which orbits at 778 million kilometers. So the gap between Mars and Jupiter's orbital path is about 550 million kilometers, or about seven times the distance between the paths of Earth and Mars. In addition to this, because Jupiter is so much further out from the Sun than Mars is, it also takes longer to complete the entire orbit of the Sun. Mars completes about six orbits for each one that Jupiter completes. So whilst Jupiter is by far the largest and heaviest planet in our solar system, and anything that gets close to it will be cleared from the orbital path, it isn't as good as the four inner rocky planets all working together in conjunction with the Sun at clearing away the debris left over from the formation of the solar system. Now, a large part of this debris is found in a region which hopefully you've all heard of called the Asteroid Belt. However, there is more debris left over in an area called the Trojans, or more specifically, two regions, the Trojans and the Greeks. Now, the difference between the Asteroid Belt and the Trojans and the significance of the Kirkwood Gap, the Lagrange points, and the three-body problem will be explored in a little bit more depth in later videos in this short series.